just to be clear, uh, I've been warned like Wednesday to prepare this talk, so it's more of a committee show than rather than a proper talk, so don't get mad at me, don't get offended by anything I could say. It's all about medias. So will media save the DAOs? The answer is no, and thank you for coming. Bye. Uh, so that was the first joke. Um, just first of all, a quick introduction. So my name is Clément. Uh, I'm French, living in a great country, not France, but Luxembourg, uh, which is close to, to France. Um, and I ran a media company. I used to run a media company uh, named France Crypto. Uh, as you can imagine, it's all about crypto industry in France, and then I moved to a decentralized, autonomous uh, organization to run a new media called Commit, which is a Web3 culture media. So no more about the traditional crypto estate, but more about uh, the Web3 culture, what everyone in this room and basically everyone in the space is building, what they are doing, why they are doing this, and yeah, the, 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 currently the future of media. Um, so, uh, there will be like four topics, four main topics. Uh, one is the, the state of media, the current media right now, and then the role of DAOs in the media, some examples uh, like pros and cons, uh, what people are doing, and what are the probably best expectations uh, for indie journalism uh, or indie uh, journalists. So first of all, the state of media. Um, basically, if you don't, do we have like any journalists here? No? So, great. I won't offend anyone. Uh, the media business currently is, is really basic. It mostly runs on advertising on any possible way. So you have uh, the, the current native advertising, you have banners you, uh, banners, you have subscription, you have affiliation, you have data monetization, which is the worst part of it because it's milking your own data. And as we work in, uh, how can I say that, great uh, haven of uh, decentralization, milking data is not great. So, um, the information uh, rely on a trilemma. The, this trilemma is the media uh, on one side, the PR companies on the other side, and the last side is the advertisers. So, meaning that when, a, and at the end, of course, you have the final news. So, when you read a, something on, on your favorite media, I don't know, like Blockworks, Cointelegraph, Coindesk, Bankless, whatever it is, uh, you have to know that there, there is this trilemma all the time. Meaning that there is a PR agency that, saw, that, try, that is trying to sell his clients. You have the advertiser that wants to be featured in the media and get the maximum coverage. And you have also the media who wants to have a, sometimes, not all the times, but sometimes a great article, a great paper. And at the end, you've got the final news that you will read. And based on that, you will know that if you have read something interesting or not. So, um, this is a landscape of the, the media. Uh, as you can see, there aren't, the, the aren't all the medias you, you, you know, but uh, like we have most, the, the most important ones. So, in the upper uh, left corner, you can see the, the, the mass media um, for, for the mass market. You can see uh, being crypto, Cointelegraph, Coindesk, Decrypt, all these ones. Uh, these medias us, um, usually have more than one million. That, I mean, the, the, the bare minimum is the defiant with like one million uh, readers per month. And on the lower side, uh, you have the... I say the niche media, but they are more decentralized. And on, on the really bottom uh, right corner, you have Rect, which is a whistleblower's media. 
somehow, but not really, but somehow uh, looks like to WikiLeaks, but definitely not the same. But the, the, their approach is kind of similar. You can see there is the Commit logo right there, uh, because Commit is a decentralized uh, media. Does it work? The answer is no, um, for multiple reasons, and I will develop these reasons. So, what is a DAO? Uh, I'm pretty sure like anyone can answer this question because uh, you are all here for that. But uh, it's some kind of show of social club uh, with a core mission. The core mission is the mission that you have decided all together, um, well, to um, to define, and then uh, it grants a power to all the people, to all the stakeholders, to 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 contribute uh, and to grow this mission. And at the end, everyone can work independently, all together with the same goal uh, and same purpose. So, uh, the pros and the cons. Um, it's mostly for the media part, but it works for basically anything, any DAOs. The first one is the autonomy. It makes like anyone here can work autonomously uh, everywhere in the world uh, on your side and you don't need to rely on anything. You do your work, you submit it, and yeah, it's done. Trans transparency, inclusion, and innovation. Transparency because, uh, well, thanks to the blockchain, then inclusion because uh, wherever you, you're based in the world, you can work for a DAO like you... you Based on your origin, sexual orientation, whatever you 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 are, you want to be your anything, you can work for a DAO and with everyone. And innovation because um, it is with this kind of structures that you can create more innovative products. Well, the don't, the the, the cons. Uh, the first one is, I mean, this, this, this one makes me love the most, it's nepotism, because uh, it's something really common into DAOs, and nobody takes this really seriously, but it is really serious. Like most of the DAOs, they are just some autocratic nepotist uh, organization, and I won't mention anyone, because uh, I know some DAOs that are probably here and act like this. Then you have security risk, then you have governance, and at the end you have also regulation risks. And they are all obvious. So the problem with DAOs, um, as you can see, uh, our DAOs, our media is called commit, and the biggest issue is commitment because uh, when you want to work for someone or want when you want to work for a project you have to commit to it and the biggest issue right now is people committed to this project meaning like guys there is something to do who wants to do it yeah and at the end you just do it yourself um, then you've got the loyalty. Um, it's really, really difficult to gain and attract new, uh, I don't like the, the, this term, this word, customers, clients, but most um, readers or uh, other contributors um, and people who will uh, take action into your DAO. It's, it's really difficult it's, it, and it, it needs a lot of commitment. And in the end, you've got the sustainable business model. So if I'm going back to my previous slides, I show you the business model of the medias. And based on what you know about the DAOs and based on what I've told you previously, you will see that none of this worked with a sustainable model because you cannot milk the data of your users because it's, it goes against the, the, the ethos of DAOs. Um, you cannot sell ads because you are not Coindesk, Cointelegraph, you are not this kind of media. So it's really difficult to rely on, on all of this. So this, this is the, the main issues I figured out myself because I was running one. So 
who owns the information. Um, so basically, these are examples of the most important media you, you know, you probably read every day. And it's, it's some kind of a game, you know, like we'll try to participate if you want or not. I will do it myself. <clears throat> Let's start with Cointelegraph. It's a fun story because uh, I've met recently the owner of Cointelegraph. So uh, can anyone in this room tell me who owns Cointelegraph? Does anyone have any idea? Yes, no, maybe not. Okay. <laughs> um, I told you previously, sorry, I told you previously, I live in a country called Luxembourg. And you probably don't know, but Cointelegraph belongs to a Luxembourgish company. It belongs to Mr. Gérard Lopez. Uh, it's really difficult to find the net worth of this man. It's approximately $4 billion. Uh, he is the founder of Legion Group. He is the founder of Mangrove Capital. He is the founder of Jenny Group, Jenny Capital. FC Girondin Bordeaux. Uh, if you're not familiar with the French football uh, soccer for the Americans here, uh, it's a really lame football club. Uh, and also Boa Vista FC, it's uh, a Portuguese football club, so I don't know them, but for Les Girondins Bordeaux, not great. So here is the map uh, I had to make myself because I made some research about it. And so you, you see Gérard here, and he owns a group called Lydian Group. In this group, you can see you have Cointelegraph, and you have all the Cointelegraph franchises. Because if you don't know that, anyone here can run a Cointelegraph franchise. Um, for example, uh, if you are in Germany, and if you, in, and if you read Cointelegraph Germany, it's a franchise of Cointelegraph, and the money goes this way. If you read Cointelegraph France, it belongs to a French media company called Cointribune, so when you read Cointelegraph France, it goes this way. They also own Crosstower, which is a sex, but um, actually, it's more of a ticketing platform, Web3 ticketing platform now. Uh, and they also own Bquant, which is a broker. They also own Swoo, which is a loyalty um, wallet program. In the end, they've got trading, uh, they've got Trade Center, which is a trading bot platform. They've got also Coin3360. Uh, Maybe you know it's the huge uh, data viz uh, application. When you put, uh, I mean, when you open it, you see like the Bitcoin charts and all the ad coins and stuff like that. And in the end, he also know, uh, owns uh, the Bank of London, which is a new bank uh, created like four years ago, something like that, five years ago. And if you connect all the dots, they are probably launching something with crypto. And thanks to that, Cointelegraph could be the arms of all of these companies. Well. If you read the newspaper, you also knew about the block. Uh, it's one of my favorite story, honestly, because like, it's, it's really funny. Like, you get two loans from one of the most crook person on earth, and then you don't tell your employee about that. Absolutely don't. And then it goes bankrupt. And what happens? Yeah, you are like, everyone hates you for no reason, and you don't know why, but yeah. When you connect all the dots, uh, SBF with FTX was secretly funding uh, Michael, can't remember his name, founder of The Block. Uh, and the chief editorial and all the staff didn't hear about that. And in the end, The Block was just like a new, like basic crooked outlet media. You can find pretty much everywhere. Like I won't mention others, but this is it. Uh, the future of media. So this is, it's basically an idea I had. It's probably not suited for everyone, but this is something that can probably help uh, more indie journalists and, uh, or independent media to rely on a more sustainable and decentralized um, 
way of working than rather the traditional ones. So this map highlights, yeah, this is our friend, you know, remember? He is funding lots of companies. I mean, he was, um, probably not for long. So basically, um, you can use a decentralized content platform that you can, re you can actually own the, the information. For example, if I'm an independent journalist, I can write on the first one is paragraph, the second one is my war, and the, the last one is access protocol. If you don't know them, just give a try. It's, it's really cool, even for, for blogging or stuff like that. You can create content, you can write articles, papers, whatever you want, and you can get rewarded for that, meaning that you can set up a price, and if people read it, they just buy it, and it turns to be an NFT, and then it goes to your wallet. It creates somehow a renting fee uh, and a reading fee for you. You plug it with your decentralized uh, social networks. So I've put Lens Protocol, for example, because it, it is one of the biggest one, and everyone is talking about Lens. But when you look at it deeply, you have like several um, layers when you can publish on top of it, get rewarded, but also reward your readers. And in the meantime, you can also onboard with you, your advertisers, without compromising the information, like saying, hey, uh, we're working with these guys. It's totally not related to the rest of our editorial line, articles, and stuff like that. But uh, we want just to give them a shout out and, and show you that we are doing this with them. End of the line. In the meantime, you can create exclusive content. For example, there is some um, independent media, uh, if I can call them like this. But for example, you've got Reg Radio, which is specialized into NFTs and stuff like that. They have created an NFT collection. So they get... Um, uh, they get fees for, for that, uh, and people can take part of it. Uh, they, they are not the only one. Bankless is doing something similar, and you can create your own token, you can whatever you want. But it is a new sustainable and um, new economic model when the reader is at the center of the information, I mean the reader, but also the, the, the news is at the center of the charts without, I mean, um, and this time not the advertiser or the PR company which is seeing his clients. And I think this is the last one. Uh, so this is the intersection of uh, an intersection and interaction between traditional media and decentralized media. It's like two masses collapsing all together. In, in, in one place, you have uh, the technology that helps empower um, more uh, and a greater information. You can also rely on it because, for example, uh, Gitcoin launches uh, its Gitcoin passport. Uh, you give information, and in the meantime, you get access to uh, some platforms because you have proved that you are a real hum human being, you are a, a real person. In the meantime, the media, they have lots of power. They have the research, uh, they have the reach, they have a sales force, uh, they have a real account, uh, accountability, uh, and their brands are well known by anyone. But when you, you merge this, you can have um, a better uh, media outlet. You can create licensing, you can create a new income when also your readers get rewarded for that. You can um, import your community and make your community participate into uh, the creation of content. And I think this is it. Thank you for joining this. Uh, I hope you have a, you had a great time. Uh, I had myself, as you can see. 
um, and come see me. I have a pop, uh, which is really cool. And uh, yeah, have a great day. Have a great ETC week. And see you.